You think of uh, the Malkins and the Crosbys of the world now to prepare for a guy like Alex Ovechkin? Well, I think the teams, uh, they're going to marry each other in some ways. Obviously, we know the speed and the skill that Washington possesses very much like Pittsburgh last night. So for us, it, uh, it continues to play a, a good structured game, manage the puck well through the neutral zone, and, and make sure we're, we're staying disciplined because we know how good their power play can be. I think what we saw last night, the Leafs can skate with most teams in this league, obviously, if not all of them. Well, we've known that. We've known that since training camp, that we, we do possess good speed. We know we can score, which is a, a tremendous asset for, for a coaching staff when you, know, when you know you can score. The challenge for us, and we've said it, is playing the game the right way and, and managing the puck properly, not turning it over against teams like Washington or Pittsburgh last night, and, and making sure that our third man stays high in the offensive zone so we don't give up odd man rushes. And when we do that, we're a good hockey club. Steve, much has been made about giving up that first goal and, and doing it more than I'm sure you and the coaching staff would like. Can you pinpoint some of the reasons why it's happening? Well, again, uh, we've we talked about it at length this morning. I think the challenge for us is making sure that we're sharp coming out of the gate, that we're getting the puck in deep, and we're establishing first, first forecheck, first shot on net, first body check. Those are the things, you know, draw the first penalty. So those are things that Randy's really been preaching with our group, and we've got to make sure we do a better job of that. When you look at the statistics and we score first, it, it's a positive. So we want to make sure we're on that side of the ledger come uh, Saturday night. Do guys maybe squeeze their stick early and, and maybe think that too much? Well, you, you, you sure hope not. You know, at this level, they're professionals that, you know, they, they stretch, they go through the routines, they're, they're mentally sharp before they get on the ice. Then it's a matter of executing. So we've got to be better, and, and I, I can tell you they desperately, they know that. We just have to make sure that we execute it. Cody Franson, in your short time here, obviously he's played well on the ice, but do you notice a leadership rule out of him? Yeah, you know what, he's, he is a, a tremendous leader in, in our dressing room. He's one of the most respected guys in our dressing room. Uh, he plays the game hard. We know what he can do offensively, but defensively he's come a long way playing with Dion this year. So he's a good leader behind, uh, behind these doors here, and he's a big part of our hockey club. What kind of evolution have you seen from Nas since you had him in junior? Oh, well, again, we know the skill that he possesses. You know, we took him in the first round when he was 15 years old, and we knew the skill that, that he possesses. Uh, the challenge for Nas is when he's playing with that edge, when he's playing, you know, with a little bit of emotion, uh, we saw the hit last night, uh, that's when he becomes a, a real weapon for us. So it's combining his skill with that tenacity. When he does that, he's a very valuable player. Well, why does that change something when he's involved physically? Like, why do you think that has the effect that it does? He just, he's that type of guy. He needs to play with that, that level of grit, with that level of anger. And when he does that, uh, he seems to take his game to the next level. So it's doing it consistently every night, getting in on the body, being physical. And then we talk about, obviously, the, the skill game that he possesses. Uh, he's a tremendously skilled player. He can beat you one-on-one. -on -one. He's a little bit snake bit on the power play, but we know that's going to come. He's a skilled guy. He's going to get on the board at some point here. But the tenacity is what we liked last night. I'll ask you a high school English type question. But I'm wondering if you can compare and contrast this week around this team to last week around this Oh boy, you know what, it's uh, Pete Horchak and I talk about that all the time, being new to the market this way. Um, you know, the highs are extremely high sometimes and the valleys are, are very deep, but for us as coaches, it's finding that level of balance. And, uh, you know, I, I think for us, it's it's something that we have to, to give our guys is, is let them know that there is a balance here. And when we win hockey games, it's to feel good, but get back to work. And when we lose hockey games, it's not getting down too, too, too far and getting back up on the horse and, and playing the game the right way. But uh, there are two separate uh, contrasts last week to this week, so we just want to ride this as long as we can. But know that when we play the right way, we can have success. You're not going to win every night, we know that. But if we play the right way, there's a chance we can get a point every night, and that's what good teams do. Going through something like you guys went through last week and coming out the other side, that, that's only going to make you guys stronger mentally moving forward. It, it does. I think every team, we talked about that in Collingwood when we went through our, our team bonding experience in Collingwood, that we knew there was there's going to be levels of adversity this year. Uh, when you get them, you don't know as a coaching staff, but we definitely have had to de deal with some this year, and, uh, and we've gotten through it now. We just want to find that balance where every night we know we're a good hockey club and we're going to be tough to play against and we're going to be tough to beat. It's finding that balance and that consistency. That's a challenge for us.